Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. And Dalton's Law says the total pressure of a mixture of gases equals the sum of the pressures that each would exert if it were present alone. So, and the idea behind this is, let's say we have a box and it um, has three gas particles. I'll draw a little wishes to indicate movement. Pressure, as you know, is caused by collisions with the side of the container. So if I have a different gas, which I'll represent as open circles, and I add it to those, this will also have collisions with the side of the wall, and the pressure is based on the collisions of just that gas. So the total pressure is going to be the pressure of um, closed circle gas plus open circle gas. So it's a pretty simple law. makes a lot of sense. Um, one of the things we often do in the lab when we uh, measure the uh, volume of a gas is we will collect it over water. And what you need to know is that when you're collecting something over water is that you have um, not just the gas you're collecting, like the gas that you're generating by the chemical reaction, you also have water vapor. And that water vapor um, is uh, you have a higher amount of it if you have higher temperatures, right? Because the water, more molecules having enough energy to escape the liquid. So what you need to always do is adjust for how much of the pressure comes from the water vapor. And in order to do that, you um, use a table that uh, I think there's one in our, there is one in our index in our book, and you adjust for, you subtract off the the pressure due to the water vapor. Okay, so to find the pressure of the desired gas, one must subtract the vapor pressure of the water from the total pressure. All right, and we'll, we'll see how we do that in a couple problems. All right, so here's a Dalton's Law problem. We have a gas mixture made from six grams of oxygen, nine grams of methane in a 15 liter flask at zero degrees C. Okay, and we want to know what is the total pressure of the vessel. Okay, so we can uh, take a look at this and say, all right, so if we have six grams of oxygen, um, we can figure out how many moles that is, and we can figure out how many moles of methane we have. And once we have that, we can use Pivner to find the, the total pressure, right? Because we have volume, we have temperature, we have moles. Okay, so let's figure out how many moles we have. If I have 6.00 grams of oxygen and 32.0 grams of oxygen is one mole of oxygen, this is going to give me 0.1875 moles of oxygen. And as I always say, take sig figs uh, pretty far out, right? Because we're going to round at the, at the very end. If I have 9.00 grams of methane, what I know is one mole of methane is 16.05 grams, and this is going to give me 0 0.5607 moles of methane. So if I add these together, moles plus moles, I get a total of 0 0.7482 moles, moles total, right? <laughs> So now I can solve for pressure. Pressure is PV equals NRT. P is going to be NRT over V, and that's going to be uh, total moles is 0 0.7482 moles times my R, which is 0 .08, 0 0.08206 times my T, 0C, so that's 273K. Now these are... Um, liters, atmospheres, joules, mole, times 273, <coughs> and I'm going to put that over my volume, which is given to me as 15.0 liter. And if I punch that, I'm going to get 0.7482 times 0 0.08206, which is my R, times 273 equals divide by 15 liters, and I get um, 
Um, you know, I want to look at the sig figs here. I've got three, 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 so I want 1.12 atm total pressure. But it also asks me what is the partial pressure of each. <coughs> and that's pretty easy to find because I want to know what percentage of this comes from each substance. So I know what the total moles is, so I can just divide each moles by 0.7482 total, right? And if I do that for oxygen, I get um, 0.251. So if I multiply 1.12 atm times 0 .2, 0 0.251 for oxygen, I get, um, let me see, um, 0.281 atm. And if I want to know the pressure that comes from the methane, either I can multiply the the percent times the um, total pressure, or I can just subtract, right? Because the total pressure has to add up to 1.12. So 1.12 minus um, 0.281 is going to give me point, whoops, 0.839 atm from methane. And this is from oxygen. Okay. Okay, the study of effects of certain gases on plant growth requires a synthetic atmosphere composed of 1.5 moles of car carbon dioxide, 18 mole percent of oxygen, 80.5 mole percent of argon. Calculate the partial pressure of oxygen in the mixture if the total pressure of the atmosphere is to be 745 torr. Okay, so it looks like all of these, like 80.5 plus 18 plus 1.5, they add up to 100, right? So I'm just going to take the percent. So partial pressure of oxygen is going to be the total pressure, which is 745 torr. And I'm going to multiply that times um, let me see, oxygen is 18%, so 0.18, and when I do that, I get 134.1 torr of oxygen. <coughs> so, um, looks like two sig figs, so I'm going to call it 130 torr. Okay? B, if the atmosphere is to be held in a 121 liter space at 295, how many moles of oxygen are needed? Okay, so all I'm going to do is take my, I have my tors that come from oxygen, and um, I'm going to convert this to uh, ATM by dividing by 760 tor. And when I do that, I get, um, let me see, Point, whoops, where's my pen? Point one seven six four ATM. Okay, so now I'm solving for moles. So I have um, PV equals nRT. So N equals PV over RT. My pressure is point one seven six four. My volume is given to me here, one twenty one liters. I'm going to put that over R, which is 0 0.08206. This is ATM, this is liters. Liters, atmospheres, over moles K. I'm at 295K, so K is 295K. Ks will cancel, liters, atmosphere will cancel. I'll be left with the units of moles. And if I plug and chug, I will get 0 0.164 times 120, oops, 121 equals, divide by parentheses, 0 0.082, oops, 0.082206 times, that should be 295, 295, close my parentheses, and I get 0.88 one moles, and it looks like I've got enough information to give me um, just two sig figs. So it's 0.88 moles of oxygen. Okay. 
Okay, a sample of potassium chloride is partially decomposed, producing oxygen gas that is collected over water. We're given the balanced equation. The volume of the gas is collected is 0.25 liters at 26 degrees C and 765 torr. So how many moles of oxygen are collected and how many grams of KClO3 were composed? This is a, is a nice problem. <coughs> So I'm collecting this gas over water, and I know the total pressure is 765. So what I need to do is adjust this pressure. I need to subtract the pressure due to the water vapor. So I go to the appendix in the book that has um, vapor pressure of water at different temperatures. And what I will discover when I do that is this is a 25 torr, specific to temperature. All right, so I'm going to subtract those 25 torr, which is comes from the water vapor, and what that leaves me is 740 torr associated with the gas. Okay, so we first want to know how many moles of oxygen are collected, so PV equals NRT, moles is going to be PV over RT. My pressure is 740 torr, I'm going to divide that by 760 torr to get my ATM, and when I do that, I get uh, 740 divided by 760, and that gives me 0.97368 atmospheres. I'm going to leave a bunch of sig figs, right, because we don't round until the end. Um, that's ATM. My volume is, let me see, 0.250 liters over R, which is 0.0. 0.08206 liters atmospheres over moles K times my T, and T is uh, 26 degrees C, so that's going to be 299K. And if I um, punch that, I get 0.97368. Times 0.25 equals equals divide by in parentheses 0.08206 times 299. Close my parentheses. I get 0.099. Looks like I can have three sig figs. 0.0992 moles of oxygen. And then the question is, how many grams of KCl3 were decomposed? So here I just use some simple stoic, right? I know how much oxygen I have, and I'm trying to figure out how much of this needed to decompose to give me that. So I'm going to start with my moles of oxygen, which is 0.0992 moles of oxygen. And what I know from the stoic, from the coefficients, is 3 moles of oxygen come from 2 moles of KClO3. And I know that 1 mole of KClO3 is the uh, molar mass of that. comes out to be 122.1 or 122.6 grams. And that will give me, if I plug and I chug, I get 0.8 one um, 0.811 grams of KClO3. Okay. All right, so we're going to stop there and